can't tell you how surprised I've been because it is a change to hear presidential candidates uh, and others, Professor Lowndes, talk about universal health care. You know, and nobody's nobody's shocked by it. Universal health care. A few years ago, you would have said, ooh, big government. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, one of the things about that is that the, the Republicans built their uh, kind of party dominance through uh, through kind of an anti-statist message, you know, kind of an anti-federal government message. You know, Reagan says in 1980, the most dangerous 11 words in the English language are, I'm, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. <laughs> and, and there was a way at the time, you know, that liberal ideas uh, were, were seeming to be kind of, uh, you know, also out of gas in a certain way. And but what's happened over time is that that uh, that rhetoric, which was so strong, and it was linked to issues of, of racialized issues, I think, of crime and welfare, uh, and and uh, as well as kind of a uh, certain kind of Cold War posturing, has really um, kind of fallen on hard times because it, it hasn't, it just hasn't worked in the in the long run, it, or it or it's come up against the limits of what it can do. So uh, issues like health care, which even you know in the mid 90s, you remember that that uh, uh, Clinton was one of his first major failures was it was an attempt to to push for broader health care coverage, uh, is is now becoming much more of a possible uh, a possible thing. Mm-hmm. Well, and part of that is that everybody's hurting because nobody's fixing the system, right? Yes, it's not a yes. liberal conservative issue. Businesses are hurting. Americans are hurting. Somebody do something. Yes. We, we don't care if you're and, uh, and, and really just, to, you know, and usually what happens is that when large industrial corporate interests decide they're going to galvanize in order to fix something, mm. it, usually something happens. Mm-hmm. And right now that's what you're seeing happening is that the GMs of the world and Fords and, and all the other major manufacturers in the United States and a lot of other interests are saying, you know, this healthcare system is is killing us, right. and uh, and you know we can't keep, be competitive on a national on an international scale unless we get this fixed, and so I think that's one of the reasons why you know the whole you know the whole private uh, healthcare system is now under attack because private interests are attacking mm. it now. Let's go to other phone calls. Jason from Milwaukee's next. Hi, Jason. How you doing? All right. How are you? Pretty good. Good. Uh, basically, my uh, my comment first would be, uh, you know, it, it's great that a younger uh, crowd, such as either high school or college, is getting into more political debates. Um, my question is basically, when is it to the, when are the American people actually going to be able to make a choice in what their country spends on, such as, um, well, healthcare, one of the the biggest issues in our country, as well as education. So it, it's easier for a foreigner to come to our country and get a scholarship and also not even have to pay anything on that scholarship for the rest of their life and pretty much get free education. A lot of my friends have applied for scholar or uh, I'm sorry for uh, a grants or for pretty much education help and they're told that they make too much. And these are people that have, you know, a studio apartment, they make the bare minimum just to get by and they're told they make too much or their parents make too much or something like that. Do you see this and, as do you see this as a liberal conservative issue Jason or not? Um, I, I pretty, I, I really don't see it as, as either or liberal or conservative or anything. I uh-huh. think it's just as a government, as our government, I think it would be best to support our own people mm. more than foreign, uh, foreign people that come to the country. I'm, All right. Thanks for your call. Professor Lowndes. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that it's the case that, uh, that, you know, people from other countries are getting a, a leg up over Americans in terms of education. But I do think that there have been severe education cuts uh, over the last 20 years, which have made public institutions almost essentially private. At the University of Oregon, for instance, gets something like 13 percent of its budget from the state legislature, uh, which, which means that uh, grants and, uh, and out-of-pocket from parents is really how, how students are, are making it through the university. Mm-hmm. And, that act- and that is, I think that is, could be a galvanizing liberal issue if, if you know, if, if there is a, a push towards uh, kind of demands for for education that, that that we see in other areas, and it's certainly the case that uh, 
students are being squeezed more and more, and more and more working class students aren't getting into universities. As, as state universities become uh, more privatized, that means that only middle and upper middle class kids mm-hmm. are able to get in. And so that's, you know, that, there's, there's a great window after World War II of an opening up of great public universities, which made uh, America distinct uh, among other industrial nations. And now that window seems to be closing in certain ways. And mm-hmm. that would be a clear area for uh, Democrats to, uh, to involve themselves in both the state and national level, I think. And it was on the top of those, what were they, six issues, Professor Astrop, that the Democrats uh, that wanted to one, take on in the first 100 hours? Yeah, and that was one of the top things, was mm-hmm. making sure that uh, students were had lower interest rates on their loans. But notice they're still getting loans. And, and I think that Professor Lowndes makes a very important point, that is, and that's something that's kind of being lost in this debate. There are huge generational disparities now between what one generation paid for their college education versus now yeah. another yes. generation. Not true. And, and and really what's happened is that the burden of paying for a college education is now being placed on this generation of students mm-hmm. much more than previous to two generations, and so uh, in the in the in the the reality is is that now in our information age economy, that college education is needed more than ever mm. in order to make it in in the world, and so you know all these factors are coming together to perhaps mobilize a group of of, of younger individuals towards uh, at least addressing the issue of education. Mm-hmm. Uh, our number, we have one line open if you'd like to join us. Are we seeing a liberal moment or a liberal, liberal trend is the question of the hour. And our number is 800-486-8655-227-2050 in Milwaukee. Carrie from Madison, hello. Hi. I think um, a lot of the money that is being spent towards the war could be spent for our own people in our own country, including, I mean, I, I think including education, health care. I think people just don't have the money anymore, mm. and they're starting to see that. And that's maybe why it's going more liberal, because they're getting sick of the prices going up when they can't afford mm. stuff. Mm-hmm. Professor Lowndes, this war is, is costing a heck of a lot of money, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, tens of billions. Yes, uh, you know, I, I, certainly, I think that's one of the things that's discrediting the Republicans as well, is what, you know, this is, where it, not only is there, you know, enormous blood and treasure being spent over there right now, but uh, but the, the American economy's future is being mortgaged on this struggle uh, with, with no end in sight. And that's certainly something that I think that is becoming increasingly clear, uh, which Democrats are, have been able to uh, begin to build on, I think. Mm-hmm. Professor Astrop, would you comment on this, please? Yeah, I, 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 I just think that you know, you think about framing issues, and probably one of the one of the remarks that resonates most with many voters out there, especially those that may not be the people who are against the war from the from the start, is that the true cost of this war, uh, which are hundreds of billions of dollars, uh, are being borne by the American taxpayers at the expense of domestic uh, mm-hmm. programs, mm-hmm. and uh, and so as a and plus, you know, they're not seeing the results of it. Uh, you know, you know, one of the results is that Iran may actually expand its sphere of influence much further than. Uh, than than anybody would have ever thought possible prior to the war, and so these are the kinds of things that uh, that really do resonate with voters when you make that type of argument that you know this money could be better spent someplace else, and and you know and that is kind of the the framework that uh, a lot of uh, liberals are using in order to uh, talk about the war. Mm-hmm.